All right, so what do you see here? Tell me what you remember from class when you have a problem like this. Um, I know for addition, you have to have common denominators. Exactly. So we're kind of there. Um, the second one, the one is really one over one. So you multiply both the top and bottom by a plus six. Okay. And once you have the bottoms the same, you just look at the top. So it's six equals one plus one times a plus six. Six equals one plus one times a plus six. Could you solve this for us, please? Yes. Um, just negative one. All right. So how did you come up with that? Um, I distributed the one, um, and then it was just six equals one plus a plus six. Very good. Okay. Now it says to check for extraneous solutions. We actually want to do that from the beginning. So let me show you what that means. You set all bottoms equal to zero. So a plus six equal to zero, a equals negative six. These are exceptions. Okay. All right, so because you didn't get that, you know, you're okay, basically. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next one here. And let's do it, let's do it, actually, let's look at 11. 11 is more like, um, more like nine, and then we'll go back to the 10 maybe if we okay. uh, if we do that. So again, you set the bottoms equal to zero. 3K equal to zero, K equals zero. This is the exception. That means if you get zero as an answer, you have to throw it out and say, nope, that's no good. Okay. All right. So again, just like before, you're going to make a common denominator. Mm -hmm. So 3K over 3K plus four over 3K, K minus one over 3K. So now, same thing as before, you're going to set the top equal. So I want you to do that. And solve that equation. A minus 1 equals 3K plus 4. Okay. Um, I have k equals negative five over two. 
That's correct. And that's not an exception. So we're good with that. Okay. All right, let's go back to 10. 10 is kind of the first one where we have to think a little bit more about what the actual common denominator would have to be. Up until this problem, I just sort of said, yeah, you know, do whatever you want. We're trying to find the least common multiple of the bottom. So 2 and 10x. So you look at the numbers, 2 and 10. The least common multiple is 10. Now, you could multiply them, but that's not the least common multiple. So you want to kind of avoid doing that you can. And then one has an X, one doesn't have an X, you're going to include X. So the goal is to get all the bottoms to 10 X. And so you, you multiply by what's missing. Okay. Um, so so what do we need to multiply the one on the left by? Um, 5x over 5x. Yes, very good. All right, very good. So so now they're all the same on the bottom. It's okay if you don't want to rewrite. I mean, it is, it's a lot of writing. You know, you just look at the top here then and solve that. Wait. Um, three over four. And again, you know, we should have checked, like, is that an exception? Um, no. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Now, there will be an exception. You know, where will it appear on the test? Yeah, it's like it's 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 kind of like it's ingenuous. You get all these problems that work out, and then you get to the text test, and uh, and it doesn't. So yeah. All right, so we're looking at x, and then it's good to factor here. x times x plus 6, and then x plus 6. We're looking for the least common multiple. Is 6? Uh, look at, treat, treat this as if they're all in parentheses. So like, like what's missing? Like what does one have that the other does, doesn't have? Um, another x. Yes, so, so we need an x and an x plus 6. That's the least common multiple. Okay. So, um... So let's, let's kind of rewrite it here. You'll notice I leave some spaces. Um, X times X plus six. Sorry, we're in, I ran out of room there. Uh, and then one over X plus six. So it's like, what are they missing? This one's missing an X plus six, an X plus six. The one on the right's missing an X and an X. So it comes down to um, All right, now, since all the bottoms are the same, what can we do at this point? Um, solve for x. 
but we just look at the top this time. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and solve that for x. Um, I have 31 over 5. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see here. So the X's cancel, and you're up. You get uh, 31 over 5. I am shocked that we have not gotten one here yet. That's uh, an exception. Yeah. All right, so it looks good to me. Thirteen. Uh, do you want us to go through, or do you do you need more explanation on it? Um, can we go through it? Sure. The like note I have written around it. That's what. He was explaining in class, but I didn't really understand it. Well, I sure hope there's more than this in terms of the note, the work in class, because like this is really, you know, I mean, when the, oh. I mean it's a lot. Uh, go ahead. No, yeah, there was more, but he when he gave us this worksheet, he was saying that's how we should start it. Okay, so uh, um, let me move on here actually because it's not, I can't snip it in very nicely. 1 over 1 minus x squared minus 10x plus 24. And I'm going to factor it. It's good to factor it as you go. And then just like the previous problem, it's got the same uh, leap common multiple uh, for uh, for the bottom here. Like this is an x and x plus 6. This is an x plus 6. So on the right, it's missing an x and an x. Same thing over here on the one over one. We can we can throw in the x and the x and then the x plus six and the x plus six. These all appear to be carefully chosen where there's not a lot of complications, uh, but they are they are definitely uh, you know really nice ones. Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at um, x squared plus 6x minus, now this is all in parentheses in the top. Um, should I factor it? Uh, not yet. We're going to attribute the negative. Right. So minus x squared plus 10x minus 24 yeah. equals 7x. So notice the x squareds cancel, which is kind of nice. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and solve this, please.
Um, t- twenty four over nine. Yeah, so another one that's really odd. Yeah. But uh, that's what I need them. So I can't speak to the uh, you know. Yeah. Dangerous, dangerous thing to get into the mind of another person, uh, even if it's just wondering how they came up with these math problems. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to, if this is all you want to work on, which doesn't have to be, but we're going to be done with this problem here fairly quickly. I mean, these don't take, they don't take a lot of time. They take some time. So if you have other stuff you want us to work on, let me know. Um, but, uh, this is everything that I see that you sent over uh, tonight for us to work on. So just like the last problems, you definitely want to factor if you can. Now they're kind of giving you a hint here. One of the factors is P plus two. So the other one you'll find is being P plus P plus seven. And then this one's also P plus two, P plus seven. So you look at the one on the left and you say, what is it missing? What is it missing? Well, it's missing a, a P plus seven. Okay. So you're going to multiply top and bottom by P plus seven. Okay. All right. Um, now this is a lot of rewriting, but you can see they have the same bottoms, right? So we can just look at the top. The top though is in parentheses. It's P squared minus three P plus two minus parentheses P squared plus three P minus 10. Is that okay, what I've done so far? Yes. Now, just like all the other problems, it's just the top now. You don't care about the bottom. You ignore the bottom. I hope your teacher's not making you rewrite the bottom over and over. No, but, I don't think uh, that. That's uh, kind of diabolical. P squared minus 3P plus 2. And then you distribute the negative in. So it's minus P squared minus 3P plus 10. Make sure you distribute it to everything. You do get some cancellations here. And uh, you get some like terms, you know, these, these don't cancel. Uh, looks like, again, it's kind of an odd answer. I mean, not always true, but if it's a fractional answer, you're probably safe, just the way these are kind of designed. So why don't you solve that for P for us, please? Okay. I have five over seven. All right, good. Any questions on that? Thoughts on that? No. All right. Well, what else would you like us to work on for uh, the remainder of the time? I could certainly find more problems like these or do some SAT prep or, you know, whatever you want. We don't have to use the entire time, but that's up to you. Um, I'll... We have an, another worksheet I'll send. I thought that one was going to take longer. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, it's, uh... All right, I emailed it. All right.
All right, there it is. Very good. Um, do you got a fall break coming up? You guys going anywhere, doing anything? What's what's going on with you? Um, yeah, we have it in like two weeks, but we're not doing anything. All right. Okay, so boy, your teacher didn't give you the kind of the, the nice vanilla ones to start with. Um, you got kind of an optical here right off the bat. Yeah. All right, so the way to do this is you always move the number over to the other side of the equation. Next thing is to factor out the negatives. This is where it gets a little bit weird. Like this. Okay. All right, so this is where, uh, try to keep in mind that every line is equivalent. Like even though we factored out the negative, it's still the same as the previous line. And uh, the next thing is you take half of this number. So this is x minus 7 squared. So you divide by 2. OK. The next thing is you square this number. So it's always positive. Okay. All right. And then the question is, uh, question is, well, how do we get back to the previous line? Remember, you're distributing that negative in minus 49. Now, whatever goes in this box, which I should have put from the beginning, also goes over here. So you're also going to put a minus 49 in like that. Okay. All right, so we're almost there. You add these numbers together. Uh, like that, bring the negative down, all right? So this is kind of where there's this this choice. Uh, you have to, you're solving, so we're gonna not expand, we're not gonna do anything else. We're actually gonna move this negative over. So let me actually just rewrite it here. So I'm trying to gather my thoughts to see, all right? So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. x minus 7 squared equals 58. So now, do you know what we, do you have any idea what we do for here? Um, you square root it. Yes. So it's x minus 7 equals plus or minus the square root of 58. And this does not reduce, which is OK. OK.
right? And the next thing is to add seven to both sides. So it becomes X equals seven plus or minus square root 50. Okay. Okay, so let's do number three next. Um, the most similar to that one. Just try a few lines here. I can scroll up if needed. I don't want to be doing all the problems here. And, and I, I know this is hard. It's weird because of the negative. It does follow the same exact flow of what we did. So if you need to get any of this down, um, me, okay. I'm just going to put a few lines up here uh, just to see where, see if you have any differences. Okay. Um, I had, got, I got um, X equals negative four plus or minus the square root of 12. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So it's x minus 2 squared. This becomes plus 4. This becomes minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, the negative there. Wow, really good. Uh, most students are not very good at this, and you, you kind of knocked that out. So the small thing here is you're supposed to reduce this root. Now, the previous one did not reduce, and I didn't really like say much about that, but this one does. Two and six, two and three. So this becomes plus or minus two root three. So that, and then you put the uh, plus two in front here. Okay. Okay. All right, the next ones are awful, <laughs> but they're, you know, I mean, they're doable. It's just, it's just, uh, they're just, uh, just a lot going on, especially when you get the fractions. Nobody likes the fractions. You know. The worst is when instructors pick problems that aren't designed to be solved by completing the square, like this one, and then they say, hey, you've completed yeah. the square. Um, supposed to learn something yeah all right so again we're going to move that fraction over here 
uh, the only the only real problem with this one is just the the awkwardness of the fraction, but it's the same steps. Okay, you factor out the negative, you leave a space, you cut it in half. When you square it, you're squaring the top and the bottom, so it's five over two squared, which is twenty five over four. Then you negate it. So now you get uh, negative, uh, you get, uh, sorry, negative 18 over four. And rather than, rather than reducing it, because you're going to take a square root, um, you end up getting plus or minus the square root of 18 over four. Um, okay. So now this becomes square root of 18 over the square root of four, which is two on the bottom. And then could you try reducing the square root of 18? Um, yes, it, uh, it's three root two. All right, so x equals minus 5 halves plus or minus 3 root 2 over 2. All right. Uh, what do you think? I mean, is this doable or is it, you know, I mean, does it look bad? Impossible? What do you think? Um, it was all right. All right. The next problem is the hardest of them all. Um, it's the same steps, though. You always move the constant over. I don't even know if they teach it this way, but this way works really well, the way I'm showing you. So if it's different in the classroom, you unfortunately have that like, oh, what do I do? Is it Matthew's way? Is it teacher's way? Like, it's whatever you want to do that you can be comfortable with. Like, whatever's going to give you the right answer um, and, and be okay with. Like, it won't offend me if you don't use my approach. Okay. All right, so the difference here is that uh, there's a four on the outside, not a negative, it doesn't matter. It's a one there, which again, it's it's always, it's just so odd um, functions. Like it's not the best way to use completing the square. Yeah. So when you, when you square it, it becomes one fourth. But what's nice when you multiply in by one fourth, you get a plus one, plus one, plus one. And looky there. It works out kind of nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to try solving it from here? Sure. Um, is it just 9.5? There's two answers. There's, there's, uh, 
it because it's 10 or it's negative one half plus or minus 10, right? So it's oh, this one's the first network set. It's negative one half plus 10, which is which is 9.5, and that's negative one half minus 10, which is minus 10.5. Okay. All right. Um, anything else you want us to work on today? Um, no, that was it. Okay. You feel like you got enough out of this lesson if we cut it short now, or do you want to keep going <laughs> with the more completing the score? No, that was good. Thank you. Oh. Okay, the reality is, is that if you know these 